Hi everyone, and welcome to the July 2021 Argo CD and Rollouts Community Meeting. I'm your host, Jesse Suen, and I am a principal engineer at Intuit and one of the maintainers of the Argo project. Um, as a reminder, these meetings are recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube after the meeting. Uh, so today we have um, an announcement and a demo um, of a proposal that Alex is working on. Um, currently, it's the best name we have for it is called Headless Argo CD, but that might change. And as for the announcements, um, there is a inaugural ArgoCon that we'll be uh, hosting in San Francisco on uh, December. And Henrik, do you want to say a little bit about the ArgoCon? Sure, uh, and I can even share this real quick. Uh... I think you can see my screen. So yeah, so we're really excited that uh, we're actually doing the first ArgoCon uh, this year. So it'll be a, a single day event uh, in San Francisco here on December 8th. Uh, so we're hoping that we can do it in person, um, but with everything going on, I mean, it's still subject to change, but we'll have a virtual part of it um, either way. So registration is open. Uh, it's the pre-registration now is just for a nominal $20. So it's, it's a very, very uh, cheap event to attend if you happen to be in the area. So it'll be a full day of, of uh, user sessions. Uh, there'll be some workshops. We're still you know, nailing down the program. The CFP is open for those of you that wanna take the opportunity to talk about what you're doing with Argo or something else interesting around Argo. We're still not clear on exactly where in San Francisco we'll, we'll host this. It will depend a bit on how many people that are actually uh, showing up. But we have the date, the date settled. Um, we are you know, working on the program. Uh, we are targeting this to be an in-person event. And we're uh, going to have a lot of interesting sessions for sure. And there'll be some fun activities at the end of the day as well. So. If you happen to be in the area, if you can't travel, uh, and if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. But you know, hope to see you all all there, and I'll post the link to the to the website here uh, in the chat. All right. Uh, thanks, Henrik. Um, any questions about the ArgoCon? All right. Um, oh, sorry. Real quick, what's um, do you have a date for a uh, deadline to submit a proposal? We have not yet. I um, mean, we're still quite some ways out. So it will be you know, probably at least and probably open for at least another couple of months or so, I would think. Awesome. But I mean, it, it doesn't really matter what the end date we say. Everyone will submit the last two days, no matter what, right? So. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Henrik. Um, all right. So next, um, we have a proposal that Alex has been working on. On a uh, basically, it's a lighter weight way to run Argo CD. Basically, you don't have to run an API server. Um, so this is a proposal that um, he um, has been working on, but he actually has a Alex has a it working as a POC and a demo. So um, Alex, you wanna Take it away. Yeah, sure. Let me start from sharing my screen. Yes, and I, I prepared a short demonstration to make it easier to understand what we're trying to build. And can you please confirm you can see my screen? Yes. You, okay, awesome. Thank you. So, yeah, as Jason mentioned, all right, let me start from introducing myself. So I'm, I'm Alex, my name is Alex. I'm a software engineer. I work for Intuit and I'm also a maintainer of Argo and I work on different Argo projects, but pretty much right now I'm 100% focused on Argo CD. And I'm sorry, it's the best time to start noise. There is a gardener working next to my window and he will disappear in like 30 seconds. Yeah, I can actually hear the gardener, so I just hear your voice. All right, that's perfect. So Zoom is doing a good job. So basically, uh, I'm going to talk about a new feature that we're proposing for Argo CD. So the name is headless and subject to change, and I will explain shortly why it's headless and maybe it will, you know, 
maybe you will be able to suggest a better one in the discussion. And I'm just going to go through the problem that we're trying to solve, the proposal, and uh, and the demo. So let's jump into the problem first. So I want to give a little bit of context first, for just in case you know if someone doesn't know. But basically, Argo CD <coughs> provides a set of features that enable multi-tenancy. And by multi-tenancy, we mean that you can install one instance of Argo CD in a cluster, and then kind of give access to that instance to different teams. And these teams can use that instance even without knowing about each other. And they can have different set of permissions. They can have access to different clusters. And it will be safe thanks to multi-tenancy features of Argo CD. And that picture kind of trying to explain, you know, what, what how it is achieved. So we have uh, a backend features, uh, back backend components of Argo CD that includes a repo server that generate manifests, controller that compare cluster and the state defined in Git. And we have API server, the head of Argo CD that powers uh, the CLI and UI, plus it provides the way to <clears throat> authenticate users and uh, define access control. So, and basically to start using this API server, you must expose it outside of a cluster. And once you expose it outside of a cluster, you can get a URL and give that URL to, to all your teams. And basically, as soon as it's exposed, it must be protected. And Argo CD offers features like uh, SSO integration, and it has its own RBAC. It's not Kubernetes RBAC, it's an Argo CD role-based access control. And you can use it to, if, you know, to basically define boundaries and specify what end users can do and what they cannot do. And this is not a problem. It's a great set of features. A lot of existing Argo CD users really like these features. Uh, but we also have users who like Argo CD and they do not like uh, multi-tenancy features. They don't like to deal with SSO in our bug. An example of such users are cluster admins. And I'm hoping that maybe we'll have a discussion at the end of this uh, presentation. We can identify more types of users who wants to use Argo CD and don't need multi-tenancy. And just to make it more clear, so imagine <clears throat> if you are admin who has uh, full access to, to the cluster and you just need a tool to manage uh, resources in the cluster. And right now, here are a couple bullet points that illustrates the, the problem for such users. So if you're admin, you have full access control. As soon as you install Argo CD, if you're following getting started guide, you have to deal with uh, accounts and passwords, Argo CD accounts and passwords. So we usually suggest to follow some instructions to extract the default password, uh, auto-generated password or built-in admin account. Next, we strongly suggest to disable admin account before you expose Argo CD API server. Next, you need to either configure SSO or maybe if you choose to keep admin account, you need to generate another strong password. And this is looks like kind of, it's pretty much staying in a way of a user who don't really need multi-tenancy and just want to use Argo CD. And the second point here is that <clears throat> we don't really have a good way to resolve it. Uh, so in, if you want to use CLI and UI, somehow you need to access API server. And the only way right now is to expose it outside of the cluster. And then you have to deal with protection. And the best way to protect is to configure SSO or you know, use built-in accounts. So it's not perfect. And we want to improve uh, user experience. And so the proposal uh, is to introduce a new mode of using Cargo CD called headless. And that picture kind of illustrates what we mean by that. We want to kind of remove the head of Argo CD, which is uh, Argo CD API server, and move it out, remove it from the cluster and kind of move it into, into the client. And I will explain you know, in details what we mean by that, by that, and you will see it in action. Here are a couple of links. So we have a proposal PR, and it explains kind of in details what we're trying to do. We have implementation that happens to be 
in order so it basically happens to be a very lightweight set of changes. So we don't have to change much to achieve it. And that's why it's pretty much implemented and waiting for, you know, proposal has to be merged first. We all have to agree on the details. Once it is merged, then, you know, implementation will go into a review. Once it's reviewed, it hopefully will be merged and will be available in hopefully next release. Uh, okay, and next I have another slide that kind of explains you know the uh, top level set of changes i do not want to go you know open the proposal and read it for you because you can uh, do it offline as well but here is kind of the top level set of changes that we want to make so um, first of all we want to make sure that it's really easy to install just a backend of argo cd it's not we don't want you know to explain to to basically redirect user to documentation and explain which components has to be installed one by one. Instead, we want to provide a bundle, uh, which is basically one YAML file that you can kubectl apply into your cluster, and it will install a required set of components. Uh, next kind of important point, I didn't mention it in, in the slides, but uh, in case of multi-tenancy, we strongly recommend to install HA version of Argo CD. HA is basically means high availability, and, and that means you, if you use HA manifests, you would install several replicas of every component for, you know, for reliability, because you don't want to affect a lot of users during upgrades. So in case of headless, we kind of assume there is no multi-tenancy, and so we can install a very lightweight version of each component, which I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this version of Argo CD can would use less than one CPU one, and less than one gigabyte of memory. It easily kind of fits into a, a mini cube. Uh, it doesn't have DEX because there is no SSO. There is no need to uh, install the DEX component that translates non uh, OIDC. Uh, providers to OIDC. Uh, yeah, so, and basically installation should be as simple as possible. And the next change we want to make is, uh, we, we want to make it, make it really easy for end user to keep using uh, Argo CD CLI and UI without API server. And the proposal is to create basically a new flag, a headless, that you can supply, and it, that flag will basically explain to CLI that there is no API server, and it has to talk directly to the Kubernetes cluster. And uh, as you will see during the demo, there is no need to specify this flag for each and every command. You can kind of configure CLI once, so it will remember that it is in a headless mode, and it will just should magically work without API server. Uh, we also want to make sure UI is still available. So because there is no API server in a cluster, you won't get any URL, but you still can launch UI locally using new command Argo CD admin dashboard. It will just start the API server on localhost and you can access UI on localhost. And the last change that we are proposing is um, basically you might not even know, but we have a very useful CLI uh, that kind of admin CLI for administrators called Argo CD Util. And it, it has a set of commands that you can use to manage Argo CD in a cluster. And that, that CLI was created first kind of for maintainers. It was really hidden uh, from end users. In the last release, we tried to kind of promote it. And basically we tried to make it, expose it to Argo CD administrators so that they can take advantage of that CLI as well. And in that release, we're hoping to even make it more visible to end users and basically deprecate Argo CD util and merge it into Argo CD admin. And it seems, at least seems to me that it will, you know, make it really easier to discover the features provided by Argo CD util. You won't have to download, you know, a separate binary and you can simply access all the commands of Argo CD Util under Argo CD Admin. 
All right, that's the set of changes, and I can just go ahead and demonstrate it live. Uh, and demonstration should not take a lot of time. Basically, it's a getting started guide for Argo City Headless, and it's supposed to be simple. So that's why I decided to kind of be brave and really start from, you know, from, from, from zero state. So I have a cluster, and I will try to install Argo CD. And I will basically configure my locally my, my CLI to access Argo CD in a headless mode. And finally, I will demonstrate that UI is working and I can create applications. So let's go ahead and, and do that. Before I start, can you please confirm you can see my terminal right now? I forgot how I showed my. Yeah, uh, yeah I can see it. Awesome. Thank you. OK. so. Here's my cluster. All I need to do, I need to start from creating a CD in namespace in a cluster. As you can see, namespace was just created. It was not there before. Next, I need to apply <clears throat> the uh, installation bundle that I mentioned. So it exists only in my pull request. So I'm basically demonstrating you. So it's not yet available in master. So you won't be able to repeat it unless you download my for Argo CD. And a set of components was created. If you installed Argo CD before, you will notice that it's shorter than usual, basically than usually. So it creates, um, as I mentioned, the backend components, plus it install uh, cluster level permissions that give Argo CD access within the cluster. And the reason is we think that users who wants that feature the most are Argo CD administrators. Uh, and this is subject to, you know, to change as well. We need to discuss what kind of bundles we want to have. So maybe we need a namespace bundle as well. So components are there. And next I can configure Argo CD CLI using Argo CD login dash dash headless command. And as you can notice, it takes no additional arguments. There is no IPI server address, no username, password. It just basically just executed. And as soon as I did it, I don't even have to wait for all components to start running. I can simply run Argo CD. I can just start using the CLI. So I can list applications. I can list projects. Uh, and it's working even without any backend components because it simply talks to uh, Argus, to Kubernetes API. And I didn't have to run any kind of command, commands to run Argo CD API server locally. It's basically magically done by the CLI itself. Every time any of these commands executed, it starts IPI server, then point the client to that on the fly started API server and then kills it as soon as command is executed. And this way, basically, user, the end user won't even know what's happening. It just looks like the CLI is you know, working at, as it is talking to API server. And finally, I want to demonstrate application creation. To do that, I need backend component. At least I need repo server so that it can generate manifests. So I just run this you know, roll out status command to make sure it was started successfully. And next I can use, you know, just a normal CLA, Argo CD CLA command to create an application. So it was created successfully. And let's make sure it's there using CLA first. I can say Argo CD app guestbook and it works. And the final, Bit I, which I want to demonstrate is UI. So I can run Argo CD admin dashboard and it starts UI on localhost, brings me a URL here. So if I just copy paste that URL into the browser, I should be able to see the typical Argo, I mean, the normal Argo CD user interface. And yeah, so it just works. Everything is deployed, I believe, because I deployed the guestbook application before and forgot to delete it. So I just picked up previously deployed resources. That's it. As I promised, demo is short and it's supposed to be short. So yeah, it, because it, the goal of this 
feature is to make it really easy to start using Cargo CD for in case of you know, no multi tenancy. And thanks you, thank you for listening. So please ask questions, give any comments about the feature. If you don't have any questions now, please uh, comment in the proposal pull request. And here are just a couple questions that we already know exist. One is, at least I, I really want to know who else wants to use that feature in addition to cluster admins. One question is like, do we, do we need a namespaced set of installation manifests? So an example I can imagine is in case if someone don't really have cluster access and just want to use Argo CD to manage a single namespace. And I'm really curious, like, would you want to install Argo CD into your namespace just to manage resources in your namespace? So this is one possible use case. Second is um, maybe you have suggestion to, you know, for better name. Headless is the best we've got so far, but we're not really happy about it. Thanks, Alex. Uh, yeah, short demos are good because short means it's simple. So. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And oh, before I forget, just for reference, this is the link to to this set of slides. I'm going to put it into chat. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing, and here is here is the link. Yeah. So the first. Go ahead. Uh, uh, uh. And another question as well is that these things you, you start you start small and then you grow. So one one interesting thing to know is as well like how do how do you what, what do you think about you know moving this to to a multi tenant environment? Because once once you often start with something small like this and then you grow and grow and then suddenly realize hey I need the full thing mm -hmm. after all. So if if anyone has any thoughts you know on on that, it would be good too. But I guess the first question is like, um, does any who would use this? Does anyone here have a need um, where they need want like a lighter weight Argo CD? Um, you know that doesn't have an API server, but they access through direct um, access to the Kubernetes API server. Um, is this something people would use? Probably not, but if you change your mind, tell us in, in the pull request. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I want to comment that I'm, I'm intrigued by it. I'm not sure um, if I have a use case for it um, because we uh, our uh, current existing Argo CD implementation is for our own um, ecosystem. Um, that that we host, that we manage, and we do have SSO. We do have um, all the the mechanics that we need to have to to leverage the full fledged Argo CD. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna have to do a little soul searching uh, to consider whether this opens additional avenues for um, complex application delivery to customer managed. Kubernetes clusters, um, and if there's some advantage to be had there, um, and it's it's quite possible that this would be uh, a very valuable mechanism to have a very lightweight, um, complex cluster configuration ecosystem. Um, it it would be it would be right for that scenario um, potentially. So. Um, I'm I'm very intrigued by it. I think it's it's a nice piece of tech. Um, I'm I'm not sure if I have a use case for it yet. Is, is there anyone here that's using it that has like an IoT or telco use case? Um, I mean, in my opinion, this is something that would lean itself, uh, you know, very well to you know highly distributed, uh, very large number of clusters. Uh, um, architecture. I'm not sure if anyone here is, is is doing anything along those lines. Yeah, I was about to mention a similar use case. I think that um, uh, the the place where you see this fitting in is if if you have a lot of clusters that don't need a lot of people accessing it, so you have no need to set up some um, uh, tenancy for those, then 
you know, just kubectl access to that thing is enough, and then you get the same experience that you get with the uh, the whole multi-cluster Argo CD, but just for um, that cluster and um, using um, normal Kubernetes access. Uh, that that's kind of like the use case we're trying to address. Um, you know, when it, I, one of the knocks of Argo CD has been like, I, I don't need all those features. Uh, but they, you know, people still like the UI, and people. So this is kind of to address uh, those set of users who just want something lighter weight. But okay, well, um, the maybe I just I, I I got a question in the background from from Henrik about an upgrade pass, and yes, uh, I think it's worth mentioning that it's really easy to upgrade from headless to HA, and literally just kubectl apply of you know HA version. So it's like it's one of the goals of the proposal to make it that simple to upgrade. Yeah. Oh you also choose Alex, um, yeah. they're not they're also not um, mutually exclusive. Like I think uh, yes, you're right. If you if you already have Argo CD set up in the normal way, um, but you have Kubernetes access to the uh, Kubernetes cluster is running on, you could actually Run the CLI in the headless mode, where and then access it um, using just normal Kubernetes credentials. That's right, right Alex. Yeah, that's right. Yes. There is no backend changes at all. Like basically, the, what I demonstrated, uh, it was installing stable version of backends, you know, controller and repo server, and I just built CLI locally. So yeah, you can just use it to access any Argo CD right now. Yeah, and I, I'm really, it was, I think it's just kind of coincidentally, it was really easy to implement. And the reason is we, as developers, we were kind of running headless Argo CD for development. So that code existed already. We just had to, you know, just massage a little bit and have some basic, it's literally feature that consists of two files and a bunch of uh, documentation changes. So, yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, so like Alex said, the proposal is on um, on in the pull request in Argo CD that is being linked yes. to. And then um, if you have any other thoughts after the meeting, uh, feel free to chime in there um, with your use cases or um, any other thoughts you might have. Thanks. Um, so okay, so that that was the end of the agenda items that we had for today, and then. Um, after uh, the meeting, we'd like to open up for any other, um, you know, open issues or questions people have for, um, you know, or discussion topics. Um, this is your chance to talk with the maintainers and or maybe raise any other issues that you might be having with Argo CD or rollouts for that matter. Hi. Uh, it's Nick Reiser from Magnite. We're an ad tech company. Uh, we use all of the Argo projects, um, Argo City rollouts, events, and workflows. Um, and we've encountered some uh, differences between our use case and what seems like the general communities. And uh, just wanted to uh, raise some of the issues that are. Um, rather large problems we've encountered and uh, things we've considered switching to different projects for. Sure. Um, so we deploy one large application uh, that handles a lot of requests, uh, up to about a million requests a second um, in a single data center. So very large deployment. And um, because of that, the 2x scale up on release, uh, on promotion of a rollout, uh, has caused some uh, issues and certainly makes deploying this application on premises uh, a non starter. Uh, so we would have to switch to something other than Argo rollouts for that. Uh, it does look like that was actually picked up for uh, version 1.1 of Argo rollouts, but just wanted to see if that is indeed in the roadmap and if that's something that. Uh, you're looking at tackling sometime soon. Yeah. What, okay. Ask which strategy you're using for the rollout. Uh, canary. A canary with a traffic routing or. Um... Uh, yes, traffic routing. Um, uh, as low as possible. 
Okay, and in which which um, traffic pro routing provider are you using? Just out of curiosity. Um, the AWS Load Balancer controller. Okay. Um, yeah, so there is a um, feature that is trying to address your um, your problem, which is, as you may or may not know, we ha currently have a feature called um, where it allows you. It's called Set Canary Scale, um, and it basically lets you set the canary scale differently than the um, the weight. And the the use case it was trying to address is like, okay, I want to start the rollout, but I want to scale up the canary, but not actually get traffic to it so that I can do things like test it before um, uh, it receives production traffic. And um, the, the complementary feature that um, needs to be implemented is called set stable scale. Um, and the idea is that we would have a way to set the stable replica set size to be the inverse of the weight. So in other words, if you have 100, uh, a rollout with 100 replicas, um, the weights would, uh, sorry, the replica set um, size would be proportional to um, the weight. Um, and so in that case, you don't have to double up the size of the uh, replica counts to be 200 during the middle of a um, ALB canary update. Um, and so that um, that is a feature we are um, we want to implement um, so that and it, it, it's gotten a lot of popularity on the issue so it, uh, we know that there's a demand for it but were you aware of that feature um, or, I was familiar with set scenario uh, canary scale but not uh, set stable scale yeah uh, set, set stable one. scale is the one that um, is the let, that would let you um, not have to double up on your replica counts during an update. Yeah, the reason it was implemented this way, by the way, is that um, we um, we wanted aborts to be uh, instantaneous, and um, in order for it to be instantaneous, you have to have the um, stable stack, you know, at the ready, so to speak, um, so that the only thing that needs to be done. Uh, during an abort or rollback is that you just change the weight back to 100% sta uh, stable. So there, just know that if you do use a feature, um, when when there is an abort, you're subject to just pod scheduling delays. Like if, I don't know, if you have to auto scale or what, but, or, but um, that would be one um, consideration. But that's probably something you're, um, you want, you're okay living with. Yeah, of course. That's a fairly clear trade-off, I think. You either have to have enough machines to scale to twice the size, or you have to accept that you won't be able to immediately shift traffic back to the old right. uh, service. Um, yeah, so so that's something you should follow. Um, let me, I'll try to, let me see if I can find the issue number. Uh, Okay, yeah, I found it. I, it actually, we, it looks like we targeted it for 1.1, which is the next release, and I, hopefully that will be in a, an August time frame, uh, but definitely definitely before QPlan. I mean, our track record is about quarterly releases for Argo rollouts. Nice. Right. Cool. Yeah, and I linked the um, issue in the Zoom chat. Much appreciative. Um, I do actually have more, but I want to leave some time for other people. Other people have things they want to raise. It looks like, I think you're good if uh, anyone okay. else. Okay, yes, go ahead. And, um, yeah. Another problem that we've encountered is the, uh, when you have a config map or secret that's referenced and it gets modified. Um, currently we uh, use prune last so we create a new config map or secret and then uh, delete the old one after the rollout has promoted um, to stable. Um, so what's nice about that is we can still scale the old um, replica set mm -hmm. as we need to as we get more traffic um, while the canary is still, while the rollout is still promoting. 
Um, but what kind of sucks about that is the diff is a whole new file. There's, it's practically useless other than saying that we're going to, once the canary is, uh, once the rollout is complete, we're going to delete the existing config map and create a new one. Uh, it would be really nice to be able to see the exact lines that are changing in that config map. Um, so something like um, Skedeker Reloader might help with that, but we would lose the ability to uh, scale the existing canary, I think, or the existing replica set while the canary is going on. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, so your choice, your 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 complaint is that if our choices are, we either use brand new config maps or we use the same uh, config map which is updated in place. The problem with the latter is that um, any new pods that get created that reference that config map are using the new values, which is not what you want yeah. in the case where you're in the middle of an update and you need to scale both the old and the new. Um, that they capture your yeah, okay, and then right. the problem with the the brand new config maps is that I can't tell what's different uh, because they're 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 completely different config maps, and we don't show diffs. Um, yep. Okay. Um, maybe maybe I, I did want to mention kind of related issue. We didn't get to to this. We have the same kind of users who basically chose to create new config maps. And they also use rollouts and they basically stepped on even a, a, a more kind of severe problem. Like if you create, uh, if you, you cannot execute prune, basically the problem was related to garbage collection of old config maps. And I, I wanted to mention another feature called prune last. Oh, he's using that already. Oh, you use it then. Yeah. Okay. So I think I missed it. Yeah, we yeah. recently yeah. enabled that. Yeah. Works like a charm. Thank you for yeah. that. That does actually help a lot, but uh, the diff is still. Uh, and I, uh, I feel like maybe I, I would not commit to implement it right away, but I feel like it's it's maybe just a UI feature. Argo CD kind of have the knowledge that it's an old version of config map and it should be able to. It should not be too difficult to compare old config map and new config map and just have it in, in UI. Yeah. Do you think it would? I was I was about to mention the same thought. Um, you know, just like how GitHub in GitHub you can diff across uh, file like, or diff across revisions or branches, and um, yeah. I do think a UI feature in Argo CD, which um, I I don't necessarily think we have to. To, um, implement smart detection, like oh, and rec, you know, understand like these are config maps coming from the, mm -hmm. the same source. But at least just provide a um, way. Like I'd like to diff this against that, and, and like explicitly, and that would be a very simple feature to um, implement in the UI to to show this. Um, but I, I I'm totally open to a UI feature that is that would allow people to do that. I think at one point, in fact, we were talking about um, diffing across applications because people had like, you know, a, a stage environment or in a prod and they wanted to kind of see before I, I want to see, or I just want to see the difference between two entire environments. And that was kind of an ambitious diffing feature we were thinking of, but diffing across two files in the same application would be pretty um, I think easy to implement since we have all the information there already. Um, yeah, that could work. Um, uh, as long as that would also get included in the Argo CD CLI. Mm. Um, That's a good point. Okay. Use the CLI quite a bit, uh, including um, with Argo CD bot, <laughs> which I don't know if, is that project dead or? Which one? Still somewhat uh, active, Argo CD bot. I don't think it's, I haven't seen much activity there, but I think it's a shame. It's, <laughs> um, so would you like to file um, an Argo CD proposal for uh, enhancement proposal for this so that we can track this? Uh, maybe, sure. I don't think there is one 
for diffing across um, files in the same application. But yeah, I, I actually agree um, for, there is a strong need for people to create new config maps every update. It's basically using like config map generator and customize. And then, um, so you can't always just automatically tell people just use the same, just update the existing config map in place because that just doesn't work for um, a lot of use cases. And so for people who do generate new config maps every release, um, Argo CD should have a convenient way to um, show differences. So, so yeah, uh, file file the issue, and then oh, we'll see what we can do. Sure, we'll do. Thank you. Uh, I think that's everything I have. All right. All right, um, if there's nothing else, I think we'll end a little bit early. Oh, there's a question um, from Karthik in the chat. Is it possible to integrate GK clusters with Argo CD, which is installed on EKS? Um, so the answer is yes. The As long as the Argo CD can access the other uh, Kubernetes API server, it should be able to manage it. Um, the caveat is that um, let's say you were doing it the opposite way. Like let's say your Argo CD was hosted on GKE and the managed cluster was in AWS. Um, in that case, you wouldn't be able to leverage IAM authentication um, to the AWS, AWS cluster uh, because it's not in the AWS network and ecosystem. Um, so um, that would be one caveat is that if you want to leverage IAM auth to, to manage clusters, then your, your control plane Argo CD should be in uh, existing in AWS. Um, I'm not sure if GKE has something similar to IAM that, like, that works the same way as Amazon. Does anyone know? It has, yes, it has, but unfortunately, I just uh, I know about it because we've got a pull request that tries to bundle, you know, some Google client libraries, mm -hmm. and they are less convenient than AWS, and it's kind of uh, it's possible but challenging. You need to execute three commands like one after another to get the token. And yeah. So um... it's possible, but yeah. Uh, Less convenient than AWS. Yeah. So, so you would be managing the clusters through bearer tokens. Um, that would be the caveat about these. All right. Um, thanks for the questions. We we actually usually don't get many questions. I like to to hear people's thoughts. All right. Um, I think that's the end of this today uh, today's meeting, and um, I think the workflow meeting might be next week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we delayed this one by one week because the Intuit was out. Um, so I think next week will be the workflows meeting. Yep, it is. All right. Um, thanks everyone for joining, and um, we'll see you again either in a week or in a few weeks for the August uh, CD meeting. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.